Hi, welcome to Insider Yachting. We have one more toy up for review for you today. Now, as you're watching through the video, remember that we have the yacht pack ready to go for this. So if you're watching this on YouTube, then I um, encourage you to click on the link down below in the text. Get yourselves over to insideryachting.com. Once you're on the website, then on the right hand side here, you'll see a button called Yacht Pack. Click on that leave the name of the boat that you're interested in remember we have these already pre-made for every boat that's on the market so the name of the boat your name the best email address for you and we'll send that over to you right away now the yacht packs go through all of the photographs it has in there all the detailed descriptions the specifications has some pricing information in there and any other bits and pieces that we have on the boat so really is a great piece of literature for anyone um, looking at one particular boat for um, either purchase or even potential charter so let's take a look at one more toy here we can see the profile shot you can see on there some of the toys that they have on board um, they have that nice intrepid couple of jet skis some kayaks and and all sorts of things making for a great charter boat now all of the boats that we've had today have all been charter boats they've all got a great charter representation um, so if you are looking to purchase something um, and offset some of those costs by chartering her out then these are some great options for you now one more toy is 155 feet long she has a 28 foot beam not quite as beamy as the previous two boats that we had reviewed uh, Mad Summer and Ohana, but still a great interior volume here. Uh, she actually has six staterooms, including the master and a second full beam VIP. So it's a great option for charter guests because quite often there are two principal charter clients in the same party. And there's always that awkward moment of, okay, who gets the master cabin? Well, that's not such an issue here because you do have that second great spacious cabin available another full beam cabin in fact so she has a nice shallow draft as well only seven feet she is a fiberglass hull and superstructure so it means she's uh, very very shallow great for the caribbean great for the islands in the bahamas um, it also means that with an older boat like this she was launched in 2001 it means that you don't have to concern yourself with some of those corrosion issues that you have with either aluminium or steel holes. Now she was launched by Christiansen Shipyards. They're a, a, a great builder pedigree yard here in the States, right up there with Delta. Um, so she has a great name behind her and you can really see that uh, when you're looking through the boat, even though she's uh, 12 years old now, she still feels like a like a newer, much younger boat. So the current ask price for one more toy is 17 million nine hundred thousand, and that's a great price when you compare it to other boats that are on the market. She is over in the med, so she's not here for us to go and take a look. But of course, anyone interested um, in her for purchase, there is no problem in us going over there and taking a look at her firsthand. So let's take a, a flick through some of the photographs in the interior. Here is the main salon. You can see she has a, a beautiful high gloss walnut finish. You actually see this in quite a few of the Christiansons. It was a very popular choice for this boat. Uh, lots and lots of windows here throughout this deck really gives it an open and airy feel. They use lots of a light colored soft goods the light treatment to the ceiling also gives it a nice uh, sort of vaulted and, and open feeling and it also works well playing off of that high gloss walnut finish so a nice area in the in the main salon here they have uh, not quite an open plan concept through into the dining room but it does have a, a nice sort of three quarters privacy wall there in between the two so it still has an open feel but you you will still get the benefit of um, having that sort of formal dining area 
uh, without it being completely segregated off. Uh, the bottom photograph, this is onto the exterior of the same deck. So this is the main deck um, outside dining area. They have the bench seat and then they have the uh, standalone seats um, just forward of that, as you can see in that bottom right hand photograph. Moving up a level, and this is where the Christiansons really uh, do a great job of these sky lounges. It's a great, great layout, a nice open feeling. They have this beautiful low bar with this sort of low seats there around it. It's not too cumbersome and, and encroaching on the general feel of the boat like sometimes happens with the full height bars up here. It's all nice and low, which means that you still have the benefit of these big windows that are around on the port and starboard side. So nice seating areas in here as well, both forward and aft. And then moving aft to the exterior of this deck, uh, they have this huge rectangular shaped table, uh, teak table, which can seat 12 people, the full occupancy of the, of the boat. So really nice area here for outside dining and, and typically majority of the meals are, are served out here. So a real great space. Now the photograph underneath that on the right hand side, that's of the master cabin. They continue the high gloss walnut through here and also all of the light colored soft goods, the bed treatment, the, the um, carpets and, and some of the seats and things in here as well. So real nice feel. They have these huge um, elongated windows on port and starboard here as well. Seating to one side and the vanity desk to the other and then moving into the bathroom which you can see on the lower photograph on the left hand side it's his and hers has the uh, shower in the middle which you can access from both sides as well so a real nice area now what's also nice about the master cabin uh, sort of suite is that you get this great office and in fact they still continue this layout even today with the the newer launches from Christiansen they still have this same sort of um, office space that you walk through uh, to go to the to the actual cabin so it's a beautiful office area I love the way that they do the uh, coffer treatment to the ceiling here it gives it sort of a an old school stately home feel uh, it's great for an office it's very professional and you could uh, in fact, have, uh, have proper meetings in here as, as well. So moving into some of the other guest cabins, remember this is six cabins. So we've seen the master cabin um, here moving over into the full beam guest cabin. Uh, that's the cabin that you see at the top on the uh, right hand side. So really a nice big cabin can easily be used as a second master. Um, very comfortable. All of the AV has been updated on this boat. They've installed the VSAT for the um, satellite communications and the internet on board. Uh, they've also had all of the um, engineering equipment, mechanical equipment um, updated and had all the periodic maintenance done that, that would need to be done on, on a boat of this age. So um, you're really getting a great uh, sort of full turnkey package here with uh, an older boat with a re price that reflects the fact that it is older but you're getting all of this newer equipment with it so so really a, a great option here but moving into some of the other guest cabins you can see uh, a typical guest cabin on the lower photograph on the right hand side that's typically what you see as far as a general feel to the other guest cabins they do have a twin as well as the queen cabins and you can see that there the two twins on the top on the right and the lower on the left so they have the uh, two twin cabins the two queen cabins they have the full beam vip and then they have the master cabin to make up the six so very very high occupancy here and you can actually see in these two twin cabins they have a pullman in each of those as well to even uh, accommodate more people in these cabins you can see that one is a full bed the other is a single so it's great for 
uh, sort of families maybe have a nanny you can put a nanny in one of these cabins as well so nice versatility to the to the setup and, and the layout here now the bottom photograph on the right hand side is moving into the pilot house all of this has been updated over the years they have everything that you would expect to see on a newer boat so they have all the ais the radar chart plotters depth sounders power management screens cctv everything that can switch between either of those screens that you see up there so um you don't have to concern yourself about needing to update this to today's standards because it's already there and moving on to the exterior of the boat um, we can see up here is the uh, the flybridge or the sun deck on the left hand side uh, you can see one of the jet skis up there what's nice about this setup is that they actually have um, the crane all the way over to one side quite often with larger boats certainly older boats they would put the crane on the center line of the boat thinking that that's the most stable part and, and will work towards the overall stability of the boat. Well, that's true, but the problem with having it there is even once all of the tenders and toys are off that deck, you're still left with the crane stuck in the middle of that deck, so half your sun deck is um, essentially unusable. Well, putting it all the way over to either the port or the starboard side, you can offset the weight by using ballast in the hull, but the benefit of this setup is that once the tenders and toys are off that deck you now have this huge open expanse of area that you can use for guest purposes so that's really what uh, yacht manufacturers are moving towards now and it's nice even though that this boat's 12 years old they had still done it back then now one of the things that i haven't mentioned so far is that one more toy actually has an elevator so she's 155 foot with an elevator you don't usually see them uh, of that size um, with the uh, with the benefits of an elevator so that's really a, a bonus here and you can just about see that and it's a fantastic um, model that that Christiansen uses for their elevators if you look at the bottom photograph on the left hand side on the uh, sort of left hand side of the photograph just beyond the uh, the sun pad and, and the jacuzzi there you can see a white box uh, which just looks like a, a buffet countertop well that's actually the elevator so the elevator goes all the way from the sun deck all the way down to the lower guest cabins and then when the elevator pops up it actually comes out of the top of that counter so you're not left with this cumbersome looking um, sort of cabinetry that the elevator would take up if it was there it actually completely disappears when it's not on that deck so it's a perfect layout um, and great for, for this area, really opens it up and means that you can see 360 degrees of the, of the horizon. Um, so they also have a bar up here, they have a little seating area too, it's um, uh, sort of a full service bar, they have a grill back there, uh, ice maker, refrigerators and some bar stools around that bar top as well. So really a great area up here and, and nice that it's so open as well. So the photographs on the right hand side is now showing some of the water toys and some of the setup for when they're at anchor. You see they have that nice big uh, Novarania inflatable there. They also have all the inflatable toys. They have the dive setup, the, um, the snorkels, flippers, wakeboards. I see a knee board in there too. So really set up well for, for charter and um, having some great fun out on the water. So now we move into um, the GA or the or the uh, the deck plan as it's also called. It's a little bit small there, so in the yacht pack we'll put in a, a full length um, GA plan or, or or deck plan in in that package for you, so you can see the the uh, layout and, and how the boat sort of works from from one area to the other. Um, just pointing out some areas now. You can see on the the uh, deck plan that's on the right hand side that is the lower deck so that's the five cabins that are down there you have all the way aft is the full beam vip then you have the two queens and then forward of that are the the two twins with the pullmans and 
um, the one bed being larger than the other out of that twin. So a real nice, um, nice setup in there. The next deck over, this is the main deck. You can see that great big salon with the huge dining table there. You have the eating area outside as well. And then forwards is the master cabin. Remember walking through that little office area. Um, and then forwards into the uh, his and hers bathroom with the split with the, uh, the shower in, in between the two. And then up onto the Sky Lounge, that great area with the uh, the low bar and the seating areas and then a huge again another big dining table this time outside which is a beautiful area to use then up onto the sun deck that we just saw um, with all of its benefits with having that crane off to the one side and another bar up there as well so you can either zoom into that um, from here or it's always best to get that yacht pack and you have it there to to refer to at any point so looking through some of the specifications now, this is quite a lengthy write-up, so I won't stop um, and go through every area of this. You can read through it at your own leisure uh, via, the, via the Yacht Pack. I'll pull out a few main features and, and benefits here, though, a few of the specifications. 155 feet, as we saw uh, earlier on, 28-foot beam, a very shallow draft of only 7 foot, so great for getting into those tight areas. A fiberglass hull and superstructure, so no worries with any of the corrosion. Um, she has a six staterooms for the 12 guests. MTU engines there at uh, around 9,000 hours. They have actually just had a complete rebuild this year, so they have a complete bumper to bumper one year warranty on those as well. Uh, there are some fuel consumptions there. Um, their estimates, they're going to be uh, pretty accurate, but um, not down to the T, but a fairly good um, basis to judge things from. So a good, um, a good uh, a sort of overall cruising uh, range that you can go quite easily from the Mediterranean over to the Caribbean. Uh, the generators they have recently been rebuilt as well um, this year those hours are at around 7,000 on the night generator and around 16,000 on both of the main generators both the main generators are 99 kilowatts the night generator is 65 kilowatts so it's great to have that to be able to give the two main generators a, a rest during the evening and then crack up that night generator to power you through the night. The other benefit of that, of course, is that because such less equipment is being used over the night, really your power consumption is so low that it's not good for the engines to run them at less than sort of 50 or 60 percent load. So switching it over to a, a lower capacity generator that would run at a higher load is much more um, beneficial to the engine and, and will make the engine run cleaner and smoother over it, over its life. So that's why they put a lower powered um, generator as, as a night generator. Um, it details some of the other equipment that they have on board, the sewage treatment plant, the air conditioning plant, runs through some of the communication equipment that they have on board here as well. Uh, Furuno equipment for the uh, navigation. Um, it has the uh, stabilizers that are on board, NIAD stabilizers, has North Star GPSs, <coughs> the CTEL um, SAT TV, so each cabin has its own uh, entertainment system and satellite control. Has the VSAT on board, which I mentioned before. Uh, the galley equipment, the Gagno um, cookers, which are the uh, industrial equipment that you'll see in, in large hotels and restaurants, has some uh, sub-zero um, sub freezers, fridge freezers, the undercounter fridge freezers, Gagno dishwashers. Uh, detailing all of the galleon equipment, details a lot of the tenders, the Novaranias, the jet skis, <clears throat> um, 
have all the inflatables, the tow behinds. Um, it now goes into, in the write-up, it goes into detailing each of the, um, each of the cabins and the equipment that's in the cabins. As mentioned, you can run through that on your own. And then it goes into a, a pretty detailed description and gives you a general feel for the boat and the uh, TVs and the entertainment system that have been updated over the time. So that's definitely worth uh, reading through and it ends it up on, uh, on this page. So like I mentioned, get the yacht pack. All of this is detailed in there. We do have those yacht packs for every boat that's on the market. So be sure to uh, request them for any of the other boats that perhaps we haven't reviewed but that you are also interested in and on that note if there is a boat that you would like me to do a review of um, then just contact us by the contact us button and uh, submit your request there we do um, take quite a few requests in fact this week's reviews were um, a request from a buyer that is looking to purchase something in the 145 to 155 foot range that he can offset some of the um, owner's expenses by chartering them out. So all of them this week have all been great proven charter options that are um, fantastic, uh, fantastic boats. Even though they might be a few years old, they're very well taken care of and will be uh, a great boat for many, many years to come. So thanks for joining me. Click on the, uh, the review archive, go and have a flick through there, see other boats that we've reviewed, and I will see you next week.